welcome to carproductstested.com this is another going to be another in-depth uh, driving review and today um, I'm in the Toyota CHR this is a 2018 model so um, you might have seen these about on the road I'll put a picture up on the, the screen to show you what they look like from the outside um, really funky looking I like the modern styling of it I think it's great looking some people might not but I think it's really contemporary really sharp and uh, really quite stylish um, this is the dynamic model it's 18 inch wheels so you get slightly more low profile tires uh, which I'll talk about later in the driving video um, costs uh, at the moment it's uh, around 20, 28,600 without the options this one's got uh, a pack on it which is 1500 plus the um, metallic grey paint which is another around 600 pounds so um, this is a 1.8 litre naturally aspirated um, petrol motor along with a hybrid system and a CVT continuous variable transmission gearbox so uh, let's go ahead and just show you how it drives so you can see on this screen here you'll be able to see the energy running back and forth um, and what's happening how the batteries are charging when the engine's running etc so I'll, I'll as we go I'll point out what's happening on the screen okay so this is um, a bit of a steep hill coming up here so the motor started and I'm just going to go up to speed so that depicts the engine putting power to the front this is front wheel drive it's putting power to the wheels and it's also um, putting power back into the battery pack as well if I really put my foot down um, it goes into power mode it doesn't have a rev counter it just goes into power mode and that will then take power out of the battery to also um, sort of uh, help drive the car as well so you've got all uh, both working in tandem to give you maximum power and torque so the second i decelerate as you can see that's now putting energy back into the, the battery pack and i've actually got a b mode which i'll show you on the interior video uh, on, if you go and check that out b mode basically is like a brake mode it uses but it uses um i think it uses the uh, electric motor to do to almost like an engine braking so you're then putting even more power back in and instead of actually you physically using the brake it's um, it's generating electricity back into the battery uh, power back into the battery and um, you're not using your brakes as much that's why hybrid batteries tend to last sorry hybrid uh, br brakes tend to last a long time I and mean, I've read about Prius owners not having to change the brakes for sort of three years and you know ridiculous amounts of miles um, later so that's had a big advantage on the uh, hybrid okay on, on the rev counter you probably can't see it but again on the interior video I will show you um, how it's all laid out on, on the drive pinnacle but basically instead of a rev counter you've got a charge point at the bottom um, uh, a blue section which depicts you driving on electricity an eco section which is uh, which uh, depicts when you're using both uh, when you're driving economically but you're still using the engine and then there's a power mode which I'm in now so you can see if I put my foot down it's taking power out the battery and putting it into the front wheels as well as the, the motor and the second I decelerate again it switches the engine off and pumps power back into the uh, battery again. There's no discernible, um, there's no discernible difference when the engine comes in, as in there's no juddering or nothing. It's um, not like a normal car where you've got a starter motor. Um, basically it's integrated all into the uh, hybrid uh, system so it's very smooth transition it, well it's you, 
you can feel it between electric and the engine going off and the engine starting again. So again, putting power back into the battery. The CHR um, is obviously new and technology advances quickly when it comes to battery packs and hybrid technology. Um, Toyota have been ahead of the game. They bought for a long time now, they bought the Prius out in, what was it, 94 maybe? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they were the front rear in a full, full hybrid technology, not mild hybrid, full hybrid, which is what this is. The difference between a mild hybrid is a mild hybrid doesn't run the car physically on on battery alone. It can't do that. All it does is help out with the lights. So it uh, basically stops it from pulling on the uh, alternator and saves a bit of fuel that way. Whereas this is a full hybrid. You can, you can run the air conditioning off it. Well, everything, everything off the battery alone. <sighs> Peace and quiet. I'm driving on the full electric now, and the awesome thing about this is the uh, this is now a little bit of a, a hill here, so I can the second I take my foot off the brake, um, it starts to charge the battery again. It's a wonderful system on this CHR. I've been massively impressed with just how fast it regenerates the uh, the, the battery pack. It's it's incredible. I mean, con when you look at the older models, it was really hard to get it about above about four, four maybe five bars um, on the the battery pack. But now I've, you know, this has been full of load of times. Well, I've had it on over the week. I've had it, and um, it's been running on electricity most of the time around town. The engine. I did a. Uh, just as uh, well I've been testing it out um, basically the, the electric mode is fantastic it really is right so we're gonna go from a 30 to a 60 miles an hour and I'll show you the acceleration 30 40 50 60 Okay, so it's not a slouch, it's, um, I think the combined power is around 100 and I'll have to have a look, I'll put the specs on the sheet, on the screen if I'm wrong, but I think the combined power is around 120 horsepower and I'll put the newton meters and pound feet up on the screen. While that may, may not seem like a lot, um, it's completely adequate for the car, I have no complaints about, about the power and torque whatsoever. The car does what it does and what it's meant to. So now I've just put it back into BMO because I'm coming down quite a steep hill and that's regenerating um, battery power really quickly because uh, when you accelerate and it goes into power mode and you're accelerating hard, well, it does pull a lot of um, energy from the battery. Um, but like I say, it regenerates really impressively quickly. Let's do zero to 60 sets now. So my foot's to the floor. That's 40, 50, 60. So it's, it's uh, not 60, it's in 11 seconds. I personally think it feels a little bit quicker than that. I might be wrong, but... Um, that's that's how I feel. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll actually time it and test whether it is that. But the main, the the more impressive is the acceleration from 50, 60, 70 uh, and upwards when you're on motorway, and it will sit um, quietly at high motorway speeds with you know no bother whatsoever. Now you'll notice, this is a especially steep hill, that I'm getting a lot of rev noise. It sounds like I'm driving like uh, an old person who's slipping the clutch. But that's because this is a CVT gearbox and it works completely differently from a normal gearbox. There is no one, two, three, four, five, six gears or up 
to 10 as the manufacturers are putting on now. But um, instead it's one continual one. I will have put a link up to how the CVT gearbox works actually. People don't like the CVT sometimes because they feel like it lacks torque. But the fact of the matter is when you boot that accelerator there's no there's no downshift and so it and I know where they're coming from when they say it feels like there's no um, there's no torque but what it is is it's so smooth that the um, the acceleration so smooth that it's actually surprising you look down and you're doing um, you know the speed that what do you want before you know it okay so I'll do another rolling test actually so because uh, this is sort of where the the CHR is better than not 60. I mean, who uses not 60 times pretty much irrelevant nowadays anyway. So, okay, so I'm doing 40. I'll put my foot down now. So that's 50 and 60. So you can see the overtaking speed is is absolutely fine. Um, and like I say, I was sat on motorway yesterday and it was sat at 70 just over 70 and uh, it was it's great it's, it's no sweat for this car whatsoever something that I really like about this hybrid system is that it's constantly cutting in and out um, I was going down the motorway again the other day at dual carriageway actually which is a two lane um, it's a two lane road in Britain and it's a 60 or 70 miles an hour limit usually and um, it was a slight downhill section, I was doing 70 and very slight downhill but I still had my foot on the accelerator but not much and it was running on full electricity, a bit like it is now, I'm doing 55 miles an hour and it's only using the batteries to power the, the car. So um, when people say oh they'll only do you know, 30, 35 miles an hour, 38 miles an hour, something like that. Um, the hybrid system is always running anyway and the fact that you can you can drive uh, 60 miles an hour and still use the battery is really really impressive in EV mode I think the actual um, when you've got it in full electric mode um, that that gives you a bit more play on the pedal as and you can with with this one it's a bit when it's in normal mode sorry it's a bit sensitive uh, you've got to be quite careful with the right foot uh, in order to keep it from the, the motor from kicking in whereas in EV mode you've got uh, it's, it's less sensitive let's put it that way so now again I'm going through these roadworks I'm doing 30 complete electricity Okay, I'm going I'm gonna try and accelerate up to 40. There's no cars behind me, I'm not holding anybody up. But I'm gonna try and accelerate up to 40 without the motor kicking in. Let's see if I can do it. By the way, this is a tip guys. If you're driving a hybrid and you want to keep it in full electric mode without the, the motor kicking in, what you do is you feather the accelerator up to where it's where it goes from uh, electric to motor on, on dead on the eco sign keep feathering it and when it's about to go into eco back off the, the pedal put your foot back on slowly again and that way it sort of slowly builds a speed up and you can see now I'm doing just about 40 miles an hour the engines only just kicked in because I wasn't careful enough but you get used to driving hybrids it's a different you get used to driving it in a different way um, But it's when you want to just go, like now, up this steep hill section, you just put your foot to the floor, completely smooth acceleration, and there you go, 60 miles an hour again, and that's up quite a steep hill. So you can see this CHR has no issues at all with acceleration or power or top, completely adequate for the car. The brakes are really sharp on this actually because it's got the hybrid system along with it being obviously an automatic as well. Um, the brakes are really sharp on it 
The only problem I find with that is when I'm parking the car, the brakes do feel a bit sensitive. So the second you put your foot on the brake pedal, it's it's sort of jarring to a halt, and it's actually quite um, it's quite uh, hard to stop it from jarring um, at those parking speeds. I'm not going to put my foot down this time, I'm just going to sort of come up to power in eco mode now and, just, and we are going downhill, so... Um, yeah, it's just absolutely fine. My other issue with this is that these low profile tyres uh, do not help with road noise and while it's not particularly invasive it's um, it's noisier, there's more tyre noise than I expected there to be from this car. Um, I know it's not a luxury car or anything, but I still think the road noise is too high on it. Perhaps if you got a model with the sort of fatter tyre, the side walls, 16 or 17 inch wheels instead of these 18 inch wheels, uh, you wouldn't get that uh, as much. The ride is a little bit firm, but it, it's it's actually a very sporty drive. This car I was really surprised when uh, you take it round corners, just how um, sort of sporty it feels. The the steering is nice and direct. It's a uh, electric assisted power steering, but if you look, the, the second I turn that steering wheel, it's quite sharp uh, without being overly sharp. It sits nicely on the motorway. Um, very easy to car to drive and now you can see I'm just pouring along in full electric mode again it's fantastic I must have saved an absolute fortune on fuel right let's go over to the eight miles per gallon stats I'm obviously in the UK so we're using UK miles per gallon figures um, I have got this week easily what the manufacturer uh, states what Toyota state so let's just have a look when I put to a complete stop. Just let this cyclist out. So, combined fuel economy is 72.4 miles per gallon, urban uh, 80.7, extra urban 68.9. Now, in the past, I've had a lot of cars on test where they've come nowhere near the stats that they're meant to for uh, the fuel economy figures and sometimes it can be ex extremely difficult to achieve the stats that they've put down if not impossible without driving uh, dangerous, so dangerously slow that you're holding traffic up um, in a dangerous manner but uh, I have achieved amazing uh, results with this car without even trying I've managed to get 70 plus miles to the gallon round town uh, on a motorway run I had what was it um, yeah there quote extra urban 68.9 which is kind of like a motorway run and I achieved that I achieved 69 70 miles to the gallon uh, some points I've been getting over 80 miles to the gallon so actually that's more than what they quote so you can do that um, it's easily achievable the hilarious thing is you can drive this um, in an erratic manner and put your foot down to the floor uh, and do all sorts you will not <laughs> be able to get it below 50 miles to the gallon and that's how economical it is um, but their stats, as I say, are easily achievable. You don't have to really drive it um, like ridiculously short, slow to achieve these. I'll have to check it out. Again, I'll put this up on the screen, guys. Uh, that's the, the suspension might be slightly firmer than the standard car. Uh, because it's a dynamic model, it may not be. I will put that up on the screen. 
but this has been a re really really nice car to have for the week and um, something I am going to start putting in the videos is would I would I own one yes I would I'd own a Toyota CHR um, hybrid you can get a 1.2 litre petrol turbo if you don't want a hybrid and that's probably cheaper because the hybrid systems obviously add money to, to that add, uh, makes a price higher yeah. Personally, I love the hybrids. I really like the Toyota Lexus hybrids. I've nailed it, um, and they just get better every every time they bring a new model out or a new uh, upgraded system. Regarding the the cabin space, etc., I'll go through that um, more when uh, I show the interior video if you want to click over to that now um, or when this re this review is finished but there's several features that I really like on this car they might be part of the the pack that's uh, the that's been optioned on this car but you've got adaptive cruise control um, so you can use that to basically keep up with the car in front when they uh, uh, set your speed at let's say 70 the car slows down to 60 and it just keeps up with it and it's very uh, accurate and it if they break hard it will break hard as well I had a car yesterday just pull out on me from behind a wagon and it braked really sharply it was very impressive but then uh, it just carries on smoothly so a very nice uh, system the radar detection system you can set that for different distances and that's uh, that was really uh, worked really nicely as well like I say, I'm driving quite a bit slowly, but there's not enough traffic behind me. I'm not holding anyone up, but I'm maximising the uh, miles per gallon by not using the engine whatsoever. And in the past, this would have dropped by now, but um, you know I'd be only running on petrol. Uh, sorry, the petrol engine on the hybrid system, but this newer CHR you can run it for quite a bit further on full electricity now another feature I really like is the hold mode <coughs> which is where you come to a complete stop and at the beginning oh, sorry at the beginning of the journey you just press the hold button when you come to a stop I've not got my foot on the brake uh, it just holds it in place with the brake lights on at the back and uh, makes you a bit of a lazy driver but I don't care it's it's nice uh, it's a really nice feature to have One of the things I really champion uh, hybrids for is the fact that <clears throat> when you sat in the car at traffic lights or say you're waiting for somebody, the engine won't be running. <clears throat> You'll just be using the electricity to run everything. Uh, if you've got the air conditioning on it and it pulls on the battery a bit heavier, the car will start, it'll maybe, it'll maybe start for 60 seconds, maybe 2 minutes tops, and then it'll just cut out again and that'll give you uh, enough battery power, probably just sitting on your car with all your, your screen on, your stereo, everything for you know, another half an hour before it needs to start again, you're barely using any fuel, so um, it's, it uses it like a generator just to, to regenerate power. Around town it's very smooth. Uh, the steering's nice and positive, as you saw, but it's very light around town, so uh, you can get it on little cobbled streets and stuff really nicely. It's got a good turning circle on it as well, a really good turning circle, in fact. Um, again, I've just used the battery for the majority of this journey around the city, and even coming down 60 miles an hour, but it's, it's constantly clicking back over, back over to using batteries. I do really like this uh, CHR. I've been vastly impressed with uh, it overall. Um, my only two real gripes are one, 
I found that the there was the road noise was a little bit high off these uh, low profile tires and secondly I did notice when I had a headwind on the, the motorway there was more wind noise um, slightly more wind noise that I would expect from this car as well that's probably because I had a headwind and uh, it was buffeting the car a bit but I was uh, still surprised that that you know that it was it was there I'm not saying the car should be completely quiet of any you know completely hushed but the fact of the matter was it was it's still there um, anything else that I can think of also let's go through the bullet points before I finish incredible miles per gallon uh, the CO2 emissions are below the 90 grams per kilometer threshold I think they're 87 grams per kilometer so it's free road tax which is great the engine is exceptionally smooth it's also very quiet the CVT gearbox is excellent some people might not like the fact it revs high before when you're getting up to speed but you quickly get used to that I never used to like CVTs I've got used to them now and I think it's a, a great gearbox uh, the steering's nice and sharp it sits really well on a motorway it's very solid it uh, feels very solid car. The build quality is really, really good on it as well. And it's a bit of a, uh, the looks are, uh, I wouldn't say that you like it or not, but I think uh, it's really modern, contemporary, sharp styling, um, almost futuristic. And I love this interior, which again, I'll go through. But there's also, I forgot to mention, quite a, bit of stuff I noticed is off the Lexus CT so you've got in between the two dials you've got this this TFT screen which you can use which you can scroll through different menus it's got really nice graphics I think that's off the Lexus CT uh, you've got other things like a few of the buttons off the Lexus CT so you can't complain about that I mean at the end of, end of the day that's the luxury marked um, so you're getting stuff directly from there overall a really really lovely car thanks for watching and please subscribe to car products tested youtube channel i'm on instagram and twitter and facebook all the usual things so remember to do that and uh, if you've got any anything you'd like to ask either leave them on the youtube video uh, or visit carproductstest.com read the review please because it's a bit more in depth and also you can comment on the there's a comments box at the bottom you can use thanks very much for watching